Now you might want to take a minute and wonder, how do we have so many different ways of magnetizing? One of the things to cover is how the magnets are made. You cannot change the magnetization direction of a neomagnet after it's made, and here's why. Let's picture this. This is just a box that represents like a block of magnetic material going into the ovens. At the time it's placed in the ovens, the manufacturer has a coil around it that impresses a magnetic field on it that lines all of the molecules up and the magnetic domains in the right direction. Now at this point it's extremely hot, so it's dead as a magnet, but all of the material properties have been lined up to make it a magnet. But they're in one direction only. That's the only way they can magnetize Neo. Now once they take it out, they cut it into a shape. If I specify a ring magnet magnetized through the thickness, they orient like this, and they will cut the rings out in this direction. Now, the lines of magnetism are through the thickness. If I wanted to cross the diameter, they rotate 90 degrees. Now they cut the rings out going this way so that the magnetization goes through the axis like this. If you want it magnetized any, any other way, they can magnetize in many different angles. One example is what we call angle magnetization. Angle magnetization is magnetized at an angle. This piece I made as a sample to show is magnetized at a 45 degree angle. Each of these little uh, football looking things are made, not quite an ellipsoid, but they're made so that the axis of magnetization is 45 degrees off of the long axis or the short axis. So we can magnetize at an angle. All they're doing is taking a larger cube of material and cutting out this shape and machining this out afterwards, but they keep the lines of magnetization going like we want it. All right, so this covers angle magnetization. Another form of magnetization that we employ is called multipole magnetization. Now a good example of this would be in making some very compact motor designs. I have a single piece of magnet material. Now while NEO cannot be magnetized radially, it can be magnetized so that we have, like this example, this ring magnet is made so it has eight poles on the surface. North, south, north, south. If you go all the way around it, the poles alternate. Now what this does is it pulls the magnetic field because that north and that south are so close together, it pulls the field down very close to the surface of the magnet. At the surface of the magnet, it's extremely high but just a fraction of an inch above the surface, it's very weak. As a matter of fact, I can take this magnet and stick it right on the glass of a CRT and it does not disturb the image beneath, which is sort of an indicator. You can tell I could take a magnet like this and I could be two or three inches away from a monitor and every time I twisted it, it would change the colors and everything and mess up the monitor. But this one, we can go all the way to the surface and the thickness of the glass is enough to where it's non-magnetic on the other side. Multipole magnetization helps us make different kinds of motors or even generators that are very, very small. They're limited on how well they can do a multipole magnet or how thick they can do it. And about an eighth of an inch, maybe just a tad more, is as much as they can make a multipole magnet out of. And this eight poles is about the maximum for one this small. We've had some customers ask for us to make like 32 poles on it. And that pushes the ability of the magnetizing coil to be able to create a separate and distinct polarity on each of the faces that far apart. Because if you're getting into 32, I mean uh, 30 poles, you're only talking 12 degrees of arc segment and for them to be able to magnetize in that fine of a coil, they really have a hard time doing that at the manufacturing level. But we can make this, these eight uh, pole ones work out very well and have had a wide customer base using them in many different applications. Now we're going to take a look at radial ring magnets. About six or seven years ago, I started work on the arc segments and we started using arc segments in motor magnets and for people that wanted to make generator applications and we started creating them. This one has 18 pieces, it's a 20 degree arc segment and showing you what this example looks like, we've made each piece, it's almost like a rectangular magnet, but it is curved. Now, the magnetization again is not radial, it is straight through one single piece. However, the shape is curved, which allows us to focus the magnetic force into a smaller area on one side than the other. This works out great for motors and generators and so forth, and if we get the air gap down to a thousandth or one and a half thousandths of an inch away from the coils, you get enormous performance benefit using an arc segment and a motor thing. 
Well, I had a lot of people start contacting me about voice calls and about other things. I want all of one pole on the inside. I was like, well, we should be able to do that. And I talked to the manufacturer and they said, no, they can't do that. There's no way to make this happen. And I was like, well, there's got to be a way. So I came up with a design for how to make these and sent it to the manufacturer and told them that basically what they need to do is take the magnet and then make aluminum plugs that replicate the one magnet that they've got. And so in this case, they could make a radial magnet that would have all these other plugs around it. And as they stick the magnets in, one at a time, they push the plug out and it holds in place. Then they glue it in and they put it in a housing. That gave me a radial representation. Now it's not perfect because where the magnets meet on this, the pole, the flux dips. So if I'm measuring on the outside of like this arc, segment, this uh, radial ring magnet here, on the outside of this one, you see it's encased in brass. Each of these magnets are repelling each other with tremendous force. This is two inch OD, one inch ID, which means each one of these magnets is a half inch thick. And they're repelling each other because two north poles next to each other are going to repel. And that makes this an extremely powerful magnet repelling. So the manufacturer has to have something to hold it. Even if they had a glue strong enough to hold it in place, you drop it one time and it's going to literally explode as all those magnets. One little break in the magnetic, in the uh, epoxy or whatever's holding it together is going to cause it to just explode and come apart. So we take these and this one has like a north on the outside, south on the outside, and north on the outside. And that allows them to stick together and these are radial and they're very powerful and they are neo magnets. Now there is a company that has patented a process to simulate this in a single piece of material. They basically create the magnetization coil so that while it's being centered, they can center in many different directions all the way around the 360 degrees and it simulates in one piece of material a radial ring magnet. Now alnico and ferrite can be made into a very common a radial ring magnet, but they're about a tenth the strength of a neo that's made correctly. All of these pieces are in 50 magnets that are put together. They've been forced into position. They're mounted in this brass shell to hold them in place so that even if they get dropped or whatever, they're going to work well. This has been a good item. However, it's expensive because every one of these are handmade. There's not a way to manufacture this uh, in a mass production way. Now another way we do essentially the same thing is what we did making the horseshoe magnets. There was a lot of interest in radial, I mean, in a neo horseshoe magnets. And so I got the same idea. And I said, well, what if we make these in the same arc segments, but now we magnetize through the thickness. One way we're magnetizing from outside to inside diameters. Now we're magnetizing through the thickness. And when we do this, we have bent the magnetic field all the way around in 10 degree steps. This is 18 pieces. So it's 10 degrees per step and bending it around we have an extremely powerful field here, about 6,400 gauss and 6,400 gauss here, making this an extremely powerful horseshoe magnet. Now, this is my four inch OD, two inch ID, one inch thick horseshoe magnet. I've got them in a couple of other sizes. And of course it's the enormously powerful eight inch OD, four inch uh, ID, two inch wide one is, is just an enormous magnet to see and, and to work with. But this covers the different types of magnetization. And I wanted to just recap this again. We got magnetizing through the thickness, across the width, through the length are the three main, but we can also magnetize at an angle. You could have a 10 degree angle, you could have a 20 degree angle, a 30 degree angle, but at each one of those takes a special magnetizing coil that the manufacturer has to make and magnetizing at an angle increases the cross tremendously because basically you're paying for a large cube of material and they're machining everything else away. So you're basically throwing away, in some cases, you're throwing away a large chunk of your material just to be left with the one piece that fits what you're looking for. So that ought to take care of magnetization and help most of you get what you need and make sure you get your magnetization correct. Thanks again. Check us out at www.supermagnetman.net.